now to wax poetic for a little bit, you know, I've been working so hard um, in local government for, for the last eight years, and um, and then four years ago to ha to come so close um, with only 888 votes stood between me and a crowded field of black men. Um, this feels amazing, and I also feel like delay is not denial. That those four years, I'm a totally different candidate and totally prepared for this moment. I believe that everything happens in my life for a reason, and that loss was something that happened in my life for a reason to prepare me for this moment. So it feels amazing. I'm ready to get to work um, and ready to uh, uh, usher in St. Louis's new era. Mayor Jones, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and congratulations on your first 100 days in office. We wanted to talk with you a little bit about some of the things that you've experienced during this 100 days and get your perspective on this time. It's been nearly three decades since Freeman Bosley Jr. became the first African-American mayor of St. Louis in 1993. Can you talk a little bit about what are some of the experiences that you as a black woman might have experienced that he did not? And are there things that you both would experience as black mayors? I think one of the major challenges that I have faced so far being the first black female in this position is always having to be aware of micro and macro aggressions. Uh, just yesterday, we held a press conference an announcing reinstating the mask mandate and Councilman uh, Tim Fitch thought it was appropriate to hijack our press conference after we were done at my podium with my name on it, uh, while I don't think that he would dare do that to a man in this position. So we just have to be smarter and faster and work harder, uh, just like uh, I think there's an old phrase or old adage that black women have to work twice or three times as hard to get half as much. Uh, so our staff has to stay ready at all times. The surge in coronavirus cases, particularly brought on by the Delta variant, prompted you and County Executive Sam Page to institute a mask mandate. Can you talk a little bit about any pushback you've gotten from businesses, from constituents, or from other elected officials? I haven't faced any sort of backlash from elected officials within the city. I think that most of them understand that the Delta variant is spreading like wildfire. It's more transmissible even by vaccinated people and that our vaccination rates are very low, especially in the African-American community where we are only 23% vaccinated, but 75% of new cases. Um, so this is a step to try to protect the public health of everyone we serve, the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. What about the reaction at the state level? Well, uh, it seems like our attorney general is filing yet another frivolous lawsuit um, that he filed in St. Louis County yesterday uh, to fight back against uh, local control, which, you know, un Unfortunately, Republicans do this sort of schizophrenic dance with local control. It's, it's okay to have local control when they want local control, but not when we want local control. Just like he withdrew his lawsuit about mask mandates against the county executive the first time, uh, we have seen, we've seen movement from the CDC in recent hours that they are considering uh, reinstating mask mandates for vaccinated people in certain areas of the country, like where the Delta variant is spreading. That evidence and that, um, that new push by the CDC, as well as our local St. Louis Pandemic Task Force, will uh, provide the proof that we made the right decision. St. Louis residents are anxiously awaiting assistance from the federal government. St. Louis has been allocated 500 million and the first installment of that would be ready to be spent, but there is a gridlock with the Board of Aldermen. Can you move the money forward, move the process forward without aldermanic approval? Well, uh, the proclamation of a state of emergency that we also did yesterday, reinstituting the mask mandate also gives the mayor uh, powers to uh, spend emergency funds allocated or unallocated um, or 
or appropriated or unappropriated. Um, and uh, we've been working with the comptroller's office uh, to determine what is appropriate under this new uh, proclamation of the, or declaration. Um, and so we're, we're focused on getting shots in arms and protecting the public health of the city and also keeping people in their homes. That is our primary focus right now with an eviction moratorium on the, uh, on the, on the horizon uh, probably at the end of this week. We don't think that there's gonna be another extension. Uh, and we also wanna make sure that we keep people safe. So that's um, looking at our, our public safety uh, initiatives as well. We wanna make sure that we can spend the funds allocated to us from the federal government uh, through emergency rental assistance. You and your administration were able to close the St. Louis Medium Security Institution known as the Workhouse within your first 100 days as you promised during your campaign. Critics say the city jail, which now contains detainees transferred from the workhouse, remains understaffed, overcrowded, with many still awaiting trial. Some detainees got out of their cells. They broke windows twice over the past year to protest jail conditions. Have conditions improved? Before we combined both facilities, both facilities were severely understaffed. And so combining the staff of both facilities into one um, made that uh, delta between fully staffed and uh, not fully staffed uh, obviously a lot smaller. And, um, you know, we can't do anything about uh, the trial system. You know, the criminal justice system is going to move at the speed that it wants to move at. Uh, so we are constantly having conversations with uh, our circuit attorney as well as our U.S. attorney uh, to see what can be done to move people through the system. Are there specific steps that you feel should be taken to improve conditions actually within the facility? We're taking those steps to improve those conditions. We're making sure that our uh, detainees are treated with dignity and respect at all times. We're making sure that they receive hot meals and fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we're making sure that we are protecting the interests of our staff as well. Uh, so we are, are slowly trying to change the culture of not only of how our staff are treated, how our officers are treated in the, in the CJC, but also how our detainees are treated. Civil rights leader and former Missouri legislator, Betty Thompson, who, as you know, passed away recently, attended your inauguration. And as a black woman who ran for mayor of University City in 1986, she seemed particularly excited and delighted that you had broken that glass ceiling to become the first black woman mayor of St. Louis. I'm going to miss uh, Betty Thompson's wit and her strength and her style, actually. And those are, I think, were the three most important lessons that I learned from her, that you can still show up as your authentic self in this position. Um, you can uh, uh, exhibit a sense of style, uh, whatever suits you at the time. Um, and then also you can, um, you can exhibit strength in this position. And, I've, and those are the things that I learned from her directly and indirectly, just watching her career um, from, the, from U City to the State House, uh, all the way to um, being an advocate and an activist um, for our people. You have joined a coalition of mayors to push for reparations. Talk a little bit about what drew you to this project and then also, how do you respond to critics who are concerned that action at the local level will just get the federal government off the hook? Well, we aren't trying to let the federal government off the hook. I think joining this coalition of mayors um, is showing the federal government that there are mayors from all over this country, from uh, different cities, both large and small, uh, mayors that are both black, white, and Latinx, and from all different backgrounds, who believe that the nation, that the United States has yet to repair um, its relationship with African Americans that were enslaved in this country. Uh, we have seen, we meaning the United States, has, has seemed to repair its relationships or, or the, the wrongs that they have done for every other ethnic group but African Americans who blood, sweat, and tears built this country, probably built this building that we're sitting in right now. 
Um, so I, I think that it's important that we uh, take the steps to repair. That's what the, the, the key word in reparations is, uh, to repair the wrongs uh, that the United States and uh, states and localities have done against African Americans. We hope that a tiny push of mayors that are organized around this issue will help the federal government to move. Uh, we hope that it supports uh, Sheila Jackson Lee's bill uh, that's currently being considered. Um, and we also hope to, to support her in this effort. In a job that never stops making demands on your time, how do you unwind? How do you attend to your holistic self? And can you talk a little bit about how the job has impacted your family life? So I am a single mom um, of the most adorable 13-year-old son uh, who is going into the eighth grade this fall. Um, and uh, there are pieces of this job he loves and pieces that he doesn't. And I think the part that he doesn't like is the part where you know we may be out grocery shopping or at a basketball game and, and someone will recognize me and I have to take a picture or take, you know, stop ticket and have a conversation uh, because I don't know too many uh, kids that don't want their parents all to themselves, right? Um, but uh, the things that I do to unwind, to have work-life balance, um, is I make sure that uh, I set boundaries around my schedule and I'm very rigid around those boundaries. Uh, Sundays are my day to rest and relax and to rejuvenate. Um, I, I pray a lot. Uh, I start every day um, uh, with my, I try to start every day with my Peloton, but sometimes it doesn't always work. <laughs> uh, but I, I definitely start every day uh, listening to gospel music, recentering myself on my relationship with God and my faith uh, to lead me into the day, no matter what it what it has in store. Who's your favorite gospel singer? Oh, I have a lot of favorites. Um, I'm definitely a Kirk Franklin fan because I I love what he does with contemporary gospel. Um, Mary Mary is also on my on my on my top list. Tamara, Tamala Mann, um, uh, uh, Donald Lawrence, and the Tri City Singers. And so it 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 varies, and and what I listen to varies also from you know the old classics and the hymns to contemporary gospel. So I love it all. Is there anything about what you've experienced during this first 100 days that you want to tell us about that we haven't already talked about? One of my leadership tenets is a leader is only as good as the team that she has around her. And so um, I do a great job of building teams and I've built a team in this office um, who all are on the same page and believe in the potential of this city uh, and work really hard day in and day out to make sure that, uh, that not only I look good, but the entire office looks good. Um, and uh, I can't thank them enough for all of the hard work and dedication that they bring to this office every day. The one thing that I think I would want your readers to know is that I am in this for St. Louis to win. A lot of people run for office to be somebody. I ran for office to do something. And I want to put St. Louis back on the map. Um, and I also want to make sure that uh, people start to look at St. Louis as open for business and a place for them to move their companies, uh, relocate their families, uh, a place for them to learn, grow, and thrive. Um, you know, we at, at the turn of the century, we were we had over 800,000 people in this city and now we're just under 300,000. And it is my goal to number one, attack racial equity, the racial wealth gap, uh, and make sure that all families, that we create an environment where all families can thrive. How do the constant headlines about crime and shootings impact that agenda? I think every mayor deals with that, um, and we aren't unique to that in St. Louis. Um, but I think that uh, we push back on that by uh, creating an environment in our public safety department uh, that says we're going to change, transform it, not change it, but transform it to one that deploys the right professional for the right call. Um, and that's going to be our goal to uh, to staff our public safety department with different types of professionals so when people call 911 and that call is answered, um, that it's answered by someone who can triage that call and, and then send out the right professional. Research done in the North Patrol District shows that up to 50% of calls can be answered by someone other than police. So how do we staff our public safety department to make sure we're deploying the right resources so people get the help that they need? 
Congratulations again on your first 100 days. Thank you. Anything for the St. Louis American.